What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But before we jump into this review right quick, I just want to send out a quick thank you to everyone who has been supporting me on Twitch. I just started a couple weeks ago, I already hit my 50 followers goal, and now I'm trying to hit 100. So if you're watching this right now, if you're a longtime subscriber especially, make sure you go over there and throw me a follow. You can catch me streaming most nights around 8 or 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I usually go for two or three hours, and we have a lot of hip-hop discussion there. We've been discussing these beat battles that are happening on IG, talking about upcoming releases. You also get a little bit of a sneak peek in regards to what I'm going to be reviewing, how I feel about some of the projects that maybe I didn't do a full review for. So it's a great way for me to keep in touch with you guys. I'll make sure I put the link up here on the screen. But we are going to jump right into this one. This is an album that many people have been discussing and asking me to review in those Twitch discussions, and it is the Alchemist and Boldy James project called The Price of Tea in China. Now, Boldy James is a rapper who's coming out of Detroit. He's built up a fan based for himself because of his gritty street narrative and traditional style and the alchemist is coming out of california as one of the best producers in the game man he's been active for decades now he's worked with damn near everybody and he is someone who i hope we see in a beat battle because his catalog is just ridiculous now these two have worked together in the past including on my first chemistry set which came out back a couple years ago i believe it was 2013 and they have done other projects and songs together since then so they do have that chemistry as the title of that last project suggests but but when it comes to this one right here, you get what you expect from these two. Alchemist delivering that high quality, eerie, gritty sample based production and Boldy James coming through with that street narrative. You're going to hear this on the opening track called Caruth. You got Boldy spitting over somber piano and vocal samples, detailing what it was like to thug it out and come out with no silver spoon, while also speaking on how he lost so many loved ones to death, to the streets, and to prison, even before they hit the age of 20. So you're going to hear a lot of him speaking on the harsh realities of his upbringing, things that he's seen, and it really does work nicely with Alchemist's production because he does kind of come with this eerie style. One beat in particular that I liked is that one on Giant Slide, where we get these whistles as well as these very heavy drums. I just thought that one had a cool sound to it and I would put it as one of my favorites. But the reflection continues on the song Pinto. This one has gentle flutes and strings, yet another great beat as Boldy remembers what it was like to put in work before the record deal. You're certainly going to get a lot of this content, him detailing his come up, past crimes, past shit that he's been involved in as he's become a rapper today. So I do like that you're getting a bit of his story. Although I wouldn't say the storytelling and narrative is quite as deep as what some other guys out there are doing. It's not really a knock on Boldy. I'm just saying that would be one of my minor gripes with this one. And at times he doesn't really set himself apart too much with his content or with his rapping because while you do get some nice flows and schemes once in a while, which I will talk about, he does rap in a much more subdued style. That's not overly energetic, passionate, original, or anything like that. Again, still a dope project. I'm just saying these are some of the things that kind of kept me from going with a higher score but to keep things moving about the stuff that i do like i like that track phone bill this one is a perfect introspective closer where boldy spits if you done saw what i done seen it'd make your eyes bleed authoring in slow motion living life at high speed and i also like this line the game done took so much from us i thought the hood loved us so you are still going to get those quality moments here as you listen through and i will also say another small gripe that i have with this one is that sometimes the hooks just blend together with the verse you know how some albums do that they're rapping the verse and then you're not quite sure where the hook is because there's nothing too different about it vocally or with the production or anything like that that is something that does happen throughout this project although you don't really listen to this type of hip-hop for crazy ass hooks i'm not saying i expect some singing and stuff like that but some of these songs do sort of blend together as you listen through and that would be a minor gripe but there are plenty of other things on here that i like including the features man you got benny and boldy as the perfect match on scrape the bowl they have some nice quotables like boldy with shout out to my shooter when he drill you that's a flagrant foul obviously we got some gun and basketball references going there some pretty clever wordplay and benny says i got my first brick and caught cameras for the crib and the alarm two o's in the v like that canada squad this is obviously a reference to drake and the ovo team so you are going to get some clever wordplay and punchlines throughout here to go along with that street narrative as you would expect from the style of hip-hop now another feature I did like is Vince Staples on Surf and Turf. This beat has a bit of a fantasy feel to it. Kind of reminds me of like maybe you're in a crystal cave in an RPG 
excellent flows on this one from both of them. And there are some pretty thought-provoking moments on here, like on the hook when Boldy says, My son think that I don't love him, he don't know his daddy thuggin'. This I took as him just speaking on how he's out there putting in work in the field so heavy and so hard, maybe he's not around as much being there for his son, but he is putting that work in and making sure his family can eat and survive. So, you know, that's a story I think a lot of people can tell, a lot of people might be able to relate to based on what they've gone through. These little poignant moments like that are powerful, and I did appreciate that one right there. Now, speaking of thuggin', we do have Freddie Gibbs coming up on Snort. This one is stylized as S and O R T, and he fits in perfectly because he's coming with that dope boy content too, with lines like, my uncle and his partner test my dope, he's got a stupid nose. I really do think the features on here were selected very well, they fit in nicely on pretty much every track, even with Evidence coming in on Grey October. Evidence has a sort of laid back, subdued flow that does match up nicely with this production because it's minimalistic, you're not getting any drums, although at the same time I did find this track to be a little bit dull, so it wasn't one of my favorites. I would put my least favorite as Mustard though, I just thought the beat on this was slower than Cold Molasses. If you do like those sort of plodding hardcore beats, I think maybe you'll like this one more than me, but I thought it was kind of boring. And even though the song Slow Roll is kind of slow too, Boldy Snaps on this one had some excellent flows on here, and one of the album's hardest lines is on this track when he spits, put that chopper to a nigga's lips like some fucking Carmax. You're also getting bass on here that's bigger than Mariah Mills titties, so this was one of my favorite songs along with many of them. So to me, I'm going to go with a 7.5 out of 10. I did think about an 8, but I just found that there wasn't anything too refreshing or unique here. Definitely enjoyed it. Makes for a very smooth and cohesive listen throughout. But I didn't get a lot of moments where I was jumping out of my seat. I thought the more subdued tone throughout this entire project can get a little bit monotonous at times. Not all out trash by any means. Like there wasn't anything on here I thought was super garbage, even though I didn't like that mustard song. I just felt like maybe a bit more variety, maybe even a bit more depth with that storytelling and street narrative would have went further as well. Just some different concepts and different ways of approaching these topics. But overall, this is pretty dope. And I think if you like that Griselda style of hip-hop that's been made more popular recently not to say they're the first ones that do it i'm just saying you know they kind of set the benchmark right now within the past couple years if you like that style you're going to like this sound that boldy james is bringing and i believe he recently just signed with griselda so i'm sure we're going to hear more from him on the way working with them working with derringer and some of those producers we'll have to see but that's all i got to say about this one check it out for yourself and hit me up with the comments down below and of course, make sure you do that good YouTube and social media stuff where you show me love and you show me lots of it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.